Digital advertising and marketing makes it really easy for you to track the performance of your marketing as well as decide which users to target. There are several publishers and marketing channels available for you to reach the right audience. Examples are Google AdWords, where you can buy advertising based on the search intent of the user. Facebook, where they can target a specific audience based on their preferences. All of these marketing efforts require you to put a small JavaScript tag or pixel on your web page. Generally, you will take this tag from a publisher site and paste it on your website. And if you are running your advertising on several channels, you have to manage all these tags. If some publisher changes the way the code is implemented, then you have to go back to the page and change your code. This creates a nightmare. And this is where a tag manager helps. In this course, we are going to look at one of the free tag managers, which is from Google, Google Tag Manager. What you will learn in this course is the benefits of Google Tag Manager, how to deploy Google Analytics code via Google Tag Manager, understand various terms used within Google Tag Manager context, and also look at few tag implementation as well as advanced tag implementation. So let's dive into the course. Before we dive into the course, I want to highlight a few points. The way I've designed this course, I have not made any assumptions on how much you know about Google Tag Manager. If you are already familiar with what's a tag and tag manager and how Google Tag Manager works and are familiar with the interface of Google Tag Manager, then you can skip over to section three where I dive into how to create tags. Also keep in mind that Udemy asks for review early on. And if you are not comfortable with leaving a review at that point, then go ahead and skip it and please review it at the end of the course. If you have any questions at any point during this course, feel free to reach out to me. I generally respond within 24 hours. So if you're ready, let's dive in. In this lecture, we are going to look at what is a tag and what is a tag manager. So what is a tag? Tags are snippets of code, generally JavaScript or clear GIF images that are provided by third party for you to put on your web pages. These third parties then use the data collected via these tags to enable reporting and targeting. Some examples of tags are Google Analytics, Google AdWords, Facebook Tracking Pixel, and many more. We will cover the full list of tags supported by Google Tag Manager in future lectures. Now let's take a look at some of the examples of tags on real pages. Here's an example of Best Buy. Go ahead and right click and do view source. This will load the HTML of the page. Go ahead and look at the HTML and you'll see some tags. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see Optimizely, some analytics tracking, as well as some bright tag tracking. These are few examples, but there are a lot more tags on this page. Similarly, when you look at ESPN, here is an example of a site catalyst tag which is Adobe Analytics. So as you can see, there are a bunch of tags and sites generally have a lot of tags on their pages. As you saw, these tags go directly on the page and could be anywhere on the page, top, bottom, middle, depending on how the developer chose to implement them, which causes a big problem when you have to change something. You are dependent on developers to make the changes to your tags. You have to work with their schedule. And many times that's too late because they have their own priority list and making changes to the tags is lost on their priority list. It's also very expensive because when developers make a change and release the code, it requires quite a few people in the process to make sure everything is working fine. So all in all, this adds to the complexity of making any changes to the tags on your pages. This is where a tag manager really helps. Tag manager removes the need to put individual tags on your page. Instead, Tag Manager provides you a container that goes on your page. So all you have to do is put that container on your pages and then manage all your tags within an interface on the Tag Manager. So anytime you have to make a change to a tag, instead of making a change in your page, you go to the Tag Manager interface, make your changes to the tags, and they get loaded 
when the container gets loaded on the page. This helps eliminate your need to be dependent on IT and you can make all your tag changes in a matter of hours or even minutes. Before moving on to tracking various other tags, I want to spend some time looking at how Tag Manager works. When you place a Google Tag Manager JavaScript on a page, it's basically sitting there and can listen to actions happening on the page as defined by your triggers. So you need to define a trigger that'll activate Google Tag Manager to take certain actions. When a trigger condition is met, then it fires the tag to an appropriate place. A trigger basically observes an interaction on the page and decides whether a tag should be fired or not. In this process, it also uses variables which are used to capture some information of the page of the action to provide that information to triggers and tags as needed. There are various types of triggers in Google Tag Manager. One of them is page views, which listens for the page being fully loaded and ready to view. Click triggers, listen for any clicks on the page on any type of element. Could be link, could be button, images, etc. Then you have user engagement, such as whether the element is visible, form was submitted, scroll depth, YouTube video watch, etc. And others such as custom events, which can listen to any events that are being fired through data layer, history changes of your browser, any JavaScript errors, and any timer delays that you put. We will cover some of these as we go through the examples. So to sum it up, there are a few things in play here. One is your container code that's ready to listen. A trigger which makes it listen to particular actions on the page or browser and the variables which store information about various things such as the actions, the page name, IDs, etc., which can then be passed to triggers and tags as needed. Once the trigger criteria is met, it fires the appropriate tag. The first step in getting started with Google Tag Manager is to sign up for Google Tag Manager. Go ahead and open your browser and go to google.com slash analytics slash tag dash manager. Once you're there, click on sign up for free. This will ask you to sign in with your Google account. If you don't have one, then you'll need to create a Google account. I'm assuming you already have a Google account. Then go ahead and choose that Google account. This will bring you to an interface where you can set up your Google Tag Manager account. So first step is to give your account a name. You can give a name that works for you. I'm going to call it Global Analytics Academy. Then you can choose if you want to share data with Google and others or not. I'm gonna go ahead and click yes. Click on continue. Now you can set up your container. Your container name can be as simply as the site or the app name where you are going to use this container. I am going to call this container analyticshire.com because that's the site where I'm going to put this container on. And then I have to choose where this container is going to be placed, whether it's a web, which is a simple website, iOS app, Android app, or accelerated mobile pages, which is simply a website for mobile. I am going to go ahead and use web and then click on create button. If you're prompted for Google Tag Manager Terms of Services, go ahead and read them. And once you're satisfied, go ahead and click yes. After it's done creating the account, it'll give you the Google Tag Manager code that needs to go on your pages. You have two snippets of code here. One, this one goes into the head and the other one goes into the body of your web page. Go ahead and copy these and send them to your developer or IT team. And if you have access to the code for your web pages, you can simply take the code from here and copy them. Once you have copied them, go ahead and click OK. And you will be launched into an interface where you can manage all your tags. We will go through this interface in the next lecture. So you'll see that the container is not yet published because you are still working on it. Once you are ready to publish it, means you are ready to push it out on your site, you go ahead and click Submit. This allows you to create versions and publish them or just create different versions. Versioning allows you to keep track of all the changes you have been making to your container. So you can go back in future 
and look at what changes were made at what point. Go ahead and give a descriptive name to your version. Let's call it initial launch and also add details about that change. Once you're ready, you can publish to an environment. For now, we'll leave it live and cover this in later lectures. Then go ahead and click publish. Once that's done, go back to your workspace and you will see another version is live. Before we go to the next lecture, I also want to show you the tag on a live site. Remember, we created this tag for analytics hire. Go ahead and do view source and you can see the first snippet of the tag manager code is right after the head tag of the page and the next is right after the body tag. So that's all for this lecture. We will cover the interface of Google Tag Manager in the following lecture. In this lecture, I will show you how to add Google Tag Manager code to your WordPress site. So here I have a Google Tag Manager code available for Global Analytics Academy. I'm going to use this site for this example. This is Global Analytics Academy. We will install Google Tag Manager code here. The first section of the code needs to go in the head of your web pages and the second piece of the code needs to go right after the body tag. So first one will be as high as possible in the head tag and the second will be right after the opening body tag. In order to do that, you will have to log in to WordPress admin for your site. Here I am on the WordPress admin. Go hover over to appearance and go to editor. If you are going to be making a change directly to your theme, then you will get a warning like this which basically means if you make any of the change within the code, then you might lose those changes when the theme gets updated. In order to circumvent that, you will have to make a child theme. So go ahead and click on make a child theme and follow the instructions that are listed. If you already have a child theme, if you are using a professional theme, then it generally comes with a base theme and a child theme so that you can go ahead and make your changes. If you are using one of the free themes, you will have to create a child theme. I'm not going to go into the details of creating a child theme. You can follow the instructions on this page, which is codexwordpress.org slash child themes to make a child theme. Once you have created your child theme or are ready to make changes, then within appearance editor, you'll see a bunch of files listed on your right hand side. Go ahead and find theme header. And here you have the head and the body. Go ahead and copy the first snippet of code and put it right in the header section. Then the next section should be immediately after the body section. So go ahead and put it right here. Update the file and your code is now implemented. If you go ahead here, reload the page, do a view source, you can see now your Google Tag Manager in the head and next snippet right here. So now you're ready. Your Google Tag Manager is implemented. If you do not want to make direct changes to your theme, you can also use one of several plugins that are available that make it easy for you to install Google Tag Manager. So let's take a look on how to use a plugin to install Google Tag Manager. Log into your WordPress admin panel and go over to plugins and click on add new and search for Google Tag Manager. As you can see, there are a few of them. We are going to use the one by Thomas. So go ahead and click on install now and activate. After you do that, you'll get a message like what you're seeing on the screen to start using Google Tag Manager for WordPress. Please enter your Google Tag Manager ID. This is the ID you get from your Google Tag Manager. Go ahead and head over to your Google Tag Manager. Click on it and here is the ID. Go ahead and copy it. Head back to your plugin. Click on enter your GTM ID in this interface. Go ahead and enter your Google Tag Manager. Leave it as it is because it does not require you to tweak your template. Uh, if you are going to tweak your template, then I would recommend putting your code directly like we saw previously. Otherwise, leave it like this. Go ahead and click Save Changes and your Google Tag Manager will be now added to your WordPress site. In this lecture, we are going to look at Google Tag Manager interface. I will give you a quick overview 
and then we will dive into each of the sections of the admin page in detail. If you have signed out and need to get back into Google Tag Manager, you'll go to google.com slash analytics slash tag dash manager and then click on sign in and choose Tag Manager. This will bring you to a screen where you can see all your accounts as well as containers. So we were working on Global Analytics Academy account, Analytics Hire Container. So go ahead and click on it. And now you are into Google Tag Manager interface. So first screen you are seeing here is, it's called Workspace. Workspace is a place where you do all your work about editing the tags, making them live, etc. We are going to look into this tab in detail in future lectures. Then you have versions. Versions is where you can see and manage all the different versions of your container. An admin area where you can change account settings, add users, change container settings, etc. We will go into this tab in detail in next few lectures. Let's go back to workspace. I want to show you a few other things. One of them is the container ID or container number, which is available right here. This number identifies your container. This number comes in handy when you're using third party tool to implement Google Tag Manager code, particularly useful in WordPress sites where you will generally use a plugin to implement Google Tag Manager. And all you have to do in those plugins is to put this container ID. Also, if you ever quickly need snippets of code that go on your web pages, then you can simply click this container ID and you will have your Google Tag Manager code snippet. And then you have options to preview, submit your workspace. In the next few lectures, we are going to dive deeper into each of these tabs in detail. In this lecture, we are going to look at the admin section of Google Tag Manager. As you can see on your screen, the admin panel is divided into two sections. One is for your account management, and the other one is for container management. I'm going to go through both these panels so that you can get a good idea of how to administer Google Tag Manager. So let's focus on the account panel. You'll see a plus sign here, which allows you to create a new account, and you'll see an option to create an account. I'm not going to go through this as we've already done account creation. Then there is account settings, which allows you to see information about the current account you're in. You can see account ID, account name, if you want to change it, and the options that you have, whether you want to share the data or you want two-step login verification. Cancel it. Next is your account activity. Click on it. It shows you what kind of activity a user has done. And then there is user management which allows you to add new users to your system. So go ahead and click. There is only one user currently, but you can create new users by clicking on new. You have to enter an email address of the person, give them the access, which is either they are user or admin. Admin means they can perform all the functions that you're performing, which is to create everything, create more users, etc. And then you can give container specific permissions. So we only have one container, but if you had more containers, you'll see all those containers listed here. And you can choose what access you wanna give to that user for which container. Your options are no access, which means if you have three, four containers and you only wanna give them access to one container, you'll give no access for other containers. Read means they can read everything that's going on. They can look at the workspace. They can look at all these versions, but they can't make any changes. Edit means they can make changes, but they can't approve or publish them. Approve means they have the permission to approve the changes, but not to publish. And publish really means is you are pushing it live. So that's the ultimate permission you can give. Admin has all these permissions. Now let's look at the container panel. As you can see, it's container. You can create new container. Similarly, what we did previously by clicking on a plus sign, you go in, you put the container name, choose the option and then create, click create. You can also see container ID or container number next to your container. Then you have container settings. 
This is the current container settings. It allows you to change the name of the container. Once you make a change, the save button is highlighted. It also shows you information on where this container is used. If you remember, we chose web. And what's the default workspace name? We call the default workspace. If you do have to delete a container, you can just hit delete here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel because I don't want to change the name. And we're back. You have user management, which is same as user management here. Install Google Tag Manager gives you those JavaScripts that you need to put on your web pages. Then you have import container. Import container allows you to import container information that's contained in a JSON file. So if you are moving container information from one container to another, you can create an export file using export container, then use that file to import container information in another container. So let's take a look at first export container to show you what that file looks like. Click on export container, and then it says choose a version or workspace. You can export from workspace or any of the versions that you have. So let's go ahead and click default workspace. And you can see this container information comes in. It contains all the information about that container, what account ID, container ID, etc. Once that's done, you can click on export and you'll see a JSON file gets created. Let's open that file to show you what it looks like. And here is what that file looks like. Once you have that file, that file can be imported in another container if that's what you want to do. Go ahead and back and you can use import container, choose a container file. We can use the one we just created. This is the JSON file. Go ahead and pick it up. And now it's ready to be created. You can either choose to create in a new workspace or an existing workspace space and import function is overwrite selected workspace or merge. Merge means it'll try to bring those content together. Overwrite is just simply overwrite. Let's just create a new workspace and give it a description called imported. Give the workspace a name. Let's call the workspace imported and the description imported. Go ahead and save it. And after you do that, it'll show you all the tags, triggers, and variables that are part of that workspace. And we'll talk about these tags, triggers, and variables uh, in future lectures. Once you are satisfied with everything, you go ahead and confirm it. And you have, you can see, now you have imported workspace. So you got two workspaces now, default and imported. Let's go back to admin. Here's an option to tie external account links. Some tags can be integrated into Google Tag Manager by using a link rather than implementing them in the Google Tag Manager. Examples are double click floodlight counter or double click floodlight sales tag. You can simply go into double click campaign manager and send a request to Google Tag Manager. Once that request is sent, you will be able to see those requests coming in into your Google Tag Manager's external link request. This is where you can approve that request or delete it. If you approve it, all those tags will be integrated with Google Tag Manager and you can manage them in Google Tag Manager interface. Going back, next one is approval queue. An approval queue is also tied to the external link account above that so you will be able to see all the requests coming in and approve them. And then environments in large organizations, you have multiple servers. It could be development servers, staging servers, UAT server, and then live server. So you can define all those environments here and then push your tags or publish your tags to specific environments. So let's say if you want to test it on a staging server, which is before you go live, you can publish your tags to staging server. And then once you're satisfied, you'll publish it to live servers or the live environment. So you can define all your environments in this interface and they'll start to appear in your publish interface. So you can choose the environment you want to publish your tags into. Go back. So this is all 
in the admin interface. In this lecture, we will look at workspace interface. This is the main area where you'll spend most of the time when working in Google Tag Manager. Workspace is a main area where you make all your changes and ultimately convert them to a version that you publish. Workspace enables you to create multiple set of changes to your container. You can have multiple workspaces which allow multiple people to work at the same time, independently of each other. Google recommends that you use workspaces for smaller set of changes whenever possible. This enables you to manage the complexity much easier. You are not making many complex changes, which means you can roll back and not lose a lot of work. One thing to note is that when multiple people are working on the same container, one or multiple workspaces may go out of sync because somebody made a change that impacts the version you have. In that scenario, you will be notified of those changes and you will be given an option to update the workspace to bring any changes that others have made. So workspace in a nutshell allows multiple people to work on the same container as well as keep versions and track of the changes that people have made. Let's dive into the workspace interface. In this interface, you start with current workspace. What are you working on? So in this scenario, I have default workspace. So if I click on it, it shows me other workspaces that are available. Currently, there are only three workspaces allowed in the free version of Google Tag Manager. Professional version has about 50 workspaces. And if you are a small organization or individual, then three are more than enough for you. Go ahead and click X. You're back to the interface. So let's go over this interface quickly. New tag, which is where you can create a new tag. The description of the workspace, you can easily edit the description by clicking on edit description. This is where you can change the description and you will be able to see all the changes as well as the activity history. Clicking on activity history will show you all the activity that has happened in this workspace. Click X, which workspace you're working on. Here is what version is live currently, how many days it was published, what's the latest version and that information. Workspace changes are also available here as well as activity histories available here. Then in the side menu, you'll see options for overview, tags, triggers, variables and folders. Overview is the default tab. Tags is where you add new tags and manage your tags. Triggers is a set of rules that you define on when a tag is fired. One of the benefits of Tag Manager is that you can define certain rules on when a tag should be fired. For example, if you want to fire a tag on certain set of pages, then you can define that trigger here. You can even go as granular as a button click or a link click. All those rules will be defined here and we'll go over some of these in our future lectures. Variables, like in any other programming languages, just hold certain values. There are some predefined variables such as event, example might be button click, page host name, what's the domain name for that page, what's the page path, the full URL of the page, and the referrer. Referrer means where, where the user came from when this tag got fired. These are predefined, but you can also define your variables by clicking on new. Anytime you have to hold a value when you're defining your triggers and tags, you can put them in variables. And then the folders are a way for you to manage your tags, variables, etc. So that's all for the interface for Workspace. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to add Google Analytics code via Tag Manager. Go ahead and open Google Tag Manager and choose the workspace that you're going to work in. I am going to work on default workspace. Click on add a new tag. This will take you to the interface where you will add your tags. The first step is to give your tag a name. In this scenario, I'm going to call it Google Analytics tag. The icon next to the name is for a folder. Remember we discussed about these folders where you can organize your tags and triggers so let's go ahead and put this tag in a folder. By clicking on this icon, you will be able to see the list of your folders. I'm going to create a new folder and call it GA tag. Go ahead and click create. Your folder is now created. We will look at the folder once we're done with tag creation. There are two ways you can go to the tag add screen, either by clicking in the middle or clicking on this pen pencil icon. After you define your tag, 
you will have to define how you are going to trigger whether it's going to be triggered on all the pages or for certain conditions so let's go ahead and click now it takes you to a screen where all the supported tags are listed including custom html custom image for anything that's not supported listed here you can use custom html or custom image tags anything that's listed google tag manager has already created easy interface for you to start using these tags go ahead and familiarize yourself with the list of tags so that you know which ones are supported and which ones aren't we are going to use google analytics which is a universal analytics which is the latest version of google analytics so go ahead and click on it and now you can see that google analytics tag is enabled for you by clicking on the pencil next to it and now you'll see that universal analytics or google analytics tag is available for you there are three other options you have to select before this tag can be finalized one is what kind of things do you want to track page views is enabled by default which means we need to do page view level tracking and there are a few other options that are available which we'll cover as needed but for our basic tracking we are going to track at page view level so go ahead and select page views then the next option is to select your google analytics tracking id which is tied to your google analytics property if you have used it in past then it should be available in a variable or you'll have to create a new variable since we haven't used it in past let's go ahead and click new variable you have to give a name to your new variable we'll call it ga tracking id you also have to provide google analytics tracking id where you get the tracking id is from your google analytics so go up to your google analytics so you get this tracking id from your google analytics go to the admin section of your google analytics click on tracking info tracking code and this is the tracking id that you need go ahead and copy it and paste it in tracking id next is you have to select the cookie domain you will generally leave it at auto unless you are doing cross domain tracking in google analytics that means you are tracking multiple domains by using the same tracking id since we are only doing basic google analytics implementation at this point leave it as auto and go ahead and click save so now you've got your setting enabled if you are selecting a certain variable from this field then you can check this box if you do not want all the properties of that variable to come along for this tracking if you do want those properties to come then you leave it unchecked for our purposes we'll leave it unchecked it's a brand new implementation we're not overriding anything we're creating everything from scratch so go ahead and click save now once the tag is created google google tag manager provides you an option to either add a trigger or save tag you will have to create a trigger for that tag to fire since we haven't created it let's go ahead and add trigger if we only save the tag then we can go back to the screen and add a trigger you will need a trigger for this tag to work so go ahead and say add trigger in this screen you'll choose the trigger that you want to apply to your tag all pages trigger is already available this is a default trigger provided in google tag manager which means apply this tag on all the pages however if you do need to create a custom trigger then you'll click on this plus sign and add your trigger we're not going to go through this one in this lecture so go ahead and exit out for our purposes we are going to fire google analytics tag on every page since we want to track all the pages so go ahead and select all pages which is selected by default and then click add this will add the trigger to your tag so right now this is the universal google analytics tag that is going to track page views and the property id for google analytics is in this variable and this tag will fire on all the pages go ahead and click save now you'll see the workspace gave us like we did three actions here we added a ga tracking id we created a folder called ga tag forget about the other stuff that i have done in the past but this is what we have been doing adding google analytics tag ga tracking id and ga tag so you can see all these things 
Once you're satisfied with everything and now you're ready to test it out, you can do a preview to see how the tag will look like, what tag will be fired. So go ahead and click on preview. Now you can see the preview mode is enabled for you. In order for the preview to work, in order for you to preview and debug, you go to your site. So analytics higher in this case, and this will launch the site in a preview mode. This is the preview panel and this is your site. Scroll down and you'll see tags fired on this page, which is the home page that we launched, is Google Analytics tag. This is the one we just implemented. There are a few things that I want to talk about in this preview panel or debug mode. This is the summary. Summary means everything that's getting fired will be listed here. Then you have a few options, page views, DOM ready, window loaded. Page, page view for our simple tag, we enabled it at a page view level. What that means is this tag get fired as soon as the page starts to load. There is also advanced triggering available which is DOM ready and window loaded. DOM stands for document object model, which means the tag should only be fired after the DOM is ready, which means the page has started to construct itself and all the elements are available. In certain cases, you do not want to fire a tag as soon as the page begins to load, but you would like to wait for the DOM to be ready so that you can access certain elements such as forms or buttons from the page. In that case, you'll use DOM ready. Then there is also window loaded, which means everything on that window has been loaded. All the JavaScripts, all the images, etc. The page is fully loaded. That's when a window loaded happens. In certain conditions, you might want to use that because you have to access those values from your window. Then there are variables. When you click on variables, you can see all the variables that are available. Event. It fires on GTMJS, which is the JavaScript. GA tracking, Google Analytics, host name, page path, page URL, and referrer. Since we came directly to the site, the referrer field is empty. If we had come from another site, then you would see a value for page referrer. Page path is slash, which is the default page or the index page. And this is the page URL. If you click on another page, then this value will change. This value shows the current page now. If by clicking on variables, you do not see the list of variables, then make sure to select the proper data layer, which is a page view in this case. So once the debugging is done, you can go back. Once the debugging is done, you can go back to Google Tag Manager. And now you're satisfied, you're ready to publish it. So go ahead and click Submit. Give a descriptive name to this version. We're going to call it, we are going to call it Google Analytics tag and we are going to push it to the live environment. So go ahead and click publish and the tag is now published and you can leave the preview mode because you're done. Now you are out of the preview mode. Your tag has been published. It's a version three. So don't worry about this version three. That's the one I was using. You might get a different number here, but it has been published now and you, your default workspace is empty for you to work on any next tag. You can see what the latest version was by clicking on it and you can see what the changes were made. We did a tag called Google Analytics tag, which was triggering on all the pages. If you wanna make some changes, you can go ahead and click and there you are. You can also go to tag and you will see your tag is available here. Go ahead and click on this tag it launches you into the same window. If you do have to change your tag, you can edit it by hovering over this window and it'll show you a pencil icon. Click on it and you can change it. Or you can also go to these options to copy, delete, post any tracking, view changes, etc. Go to variables and you can see all those variables as well as the custom variable that you defined, which was GA tracking ID. And if you have to make a change, just click on the variable and you are launched into the window. This is where you can make any changes as well as you have options to copy, delete, etc. here. And the next is folders. Go ahead and click on folder. And you can see your folder is available right here, which is Google Analytics tag folder. Click on it and you can see your tag is now available in this folder. 
you will be able to see all your folders in this window. So that's it. You've just created your first tag using Google Tag Manager and learn how everything is organized. In this lecture, I will show you how to deploy a tag for Google Analytics to track external link clicks on your website. Instead of starting with a tag, we will start with first creating a trigger that will capture the link clicks and then define the tag to push it over to Google Analytics. So go ahead and click on triggers, click new, and let's call it GA external link clicks trigger. Go ahead and click on the circle here or the pencil icon. Since we are going to be tracking link clicks, go under the click type trigger and click on just links. Then you have a few other options. One is wait for tags, which essentially means you want this tag to be fired after other tags have fired or some time have elapsed. So go ahead and select on it and you can set the time here. So whichever comes first, either all the tags have fired or this 2000 milliseconds have passed, that's when this tag will fire. We'll leave it as default, so un uncheck it. And then there is a check validation, which basically ensures that it was a true click. We are going to leave it unchecked. The next one is this trigger fires on all link clicks or some link clicks. For our case, we are going to be only tracking external link clicks. Then we will be using some link clicks. So go ahead and click on some link clicks. And then it gives you a few options that you can choose from to enable this trigger. Are there any conditions that you want to fire this tag on or not on? So for our example, since we are tracking external link clicks, we want to make sure we only track where the click URL does not contain analyticshire.com, right? We only want to track external links, not internal links. So we have click URL, the URL of the click does not contain analyticshire.com. In that scenario, it is going to track all the external links on analytics higher. So once you're done with it, go ahead and hit save. And just to give you an idea, here are two external links on analytics higher, which take you to Facebook and Twitter and any other links that are external will be tracked as well. So now you've got the trigger enabled. When this trigger happens, we want to track these link clicks in Google Analytics as events. So we'll create a tag for that. But before we go ahead and create a tag, we want to capture some information of the link clicks in variables. So go ahead and click variables, click on configure. And here you have all the variables tied to a click. Go ahead and click all of them. Now you have a bunch of variables that you will be able to use in your tags or triggers. Go ahead and click X, now you're done. And you'll see all those variables are now available. Head over to tag, and now we'll define a new tag. Click on new, and call it external click tag. Go ahead and click on the tag configuration. We are going to push this tag to Google Analytics. So click on Universal Analytics. That's the new version of Google Analytics, or the latest version. And then it gives you an option of track type in this scenario. It is an event. That's what we're going to track in Google Analytics. All these clicks will be tracked as events. And you have to provide your event tracking parameters. If you're not familiar with Google Analytics event tracking, then you'll need to go deeper into Google Analytics course. But for the purposes of this course, basically what you are providing is few names so that you can see those reports in Google Analytics. Here's a report. So event category, event action, and a label. So we'll go over here and I'll call it the category as external links. Then for action, I am going to use the name of the page where this link was clicked. For that, go ahead and click on this icon right here. It opens up the standard variables and we are going to use page path. Then for label, I'm going to use the URL of the link that was clicked which is the click URL. This is where the user is going. So we'll know whether it's a Twitter, Facebook, or any other external link. So go ahead and click that. So now you've got your options set. We 
took the page path variable for action click url for the label leave the value blank the next option is to choose whether this whether this event tracking should generate a new page view or not within google analytics we do not want it to register as a new page view so we'll go ahead and click true so it's a non interaction hit the next is the google analytics setting we need to set the variable where this data is going to be tracked in so we already have a ga tracking id defined in our previous example go ahead and click ga tracking id which is the id of your google analytics property enable overriding setting in this tag basically means that any values any properties that you have defined for this variable that you can override here by clicking it will open up options for you to override those settings for this example we are just going to leave it as it is then there are some advanced settings where you can provide the priority of the tag if there are a bunch of tags being fired you can define which one gets fired first second third and so on also you can enable custom tag firing schedule for example if you do not want to fire this tag during daytime then you can set it up we are not going to play with this for this one so just leave it as it is this is advanced tracking which will be very custom to your organization and then you have only fire this tag in published container which means when you are playing with it uh, when you are testing it you do not want this to be fired i am going to leave it unchecked because i want it to be fired even when i'm testing it and then you have tag firing options how many times you want it to be fired once per every e event unlimited or once per page so unlimited means it's just going to be firing every time this event happens but we want this to be once per event and you also have tag sequencing if you have a bunch of tags how do you want to sequence them which tag gets fired first and all so on and then you have to define a trigger so let's go ahead and pick our trigger click on this icon right here or in the middle and choose ga external link trigger go back to your workspace now we are going to preview before releasing this tag so go ahead and click on preview now you are in the preview mode you will have to launch analytics higher in the same browser so we are going to relaunch analytics higher in the same browser and you will see the preview window now analytics higher is opened in a preview mode here is your preview so when you launch the window you'll see your first tag fired which was just basic google analytics tag and it says tag not fired external click tag now i'm going to click on external window here to launch twitter right so i'm going to click on this and see what tag gets fired if i click on twitter it'll open twitter window in the same window and i will lose this view in order to make sure that i do not lose this view and open twitter link in a different tab i am going to use control key so control key with my mouse click this launches twitter in a different window and as you can see this tag got fired also in the summary you'll see gtm link click happen let's go ahead and click on gtm link click or this tag to see the details so here you can see action was flash which is the page path which is the default then you've got the category external links and label which is where are we going twitter.com slash analytics higher these are the event options that we set when we were enabling event tracking via google tag manager go ahead and look at it here's your tracking id now you can head over to google analytics and go to your event tracking to see which events are getting fired you got external links event action and then event label don't go by these numbers because i did another demo that bumped up the number to two if you're doing it only one time then you'll see only one so that's it you have verified everything and your tag is ready to be published go back to your workspace and click on submit it's going to give you an option to provide a description go ahead and provide your version name and description make sure it's the right environment to publish and go ahead and publish it and that's it your tag was just published in this lecture i will show you how to track button clicks on a website as you can see there are a few buttons on analytics hire job listing available candidates sign up etc so we are going to track these buttons as events in google analytics in order to do so we'll be deploying a tag via Google Tag Manager. 
So go over to Google Tag Manager and let's first create a trigger, new trigger and click on all elements because we are going to be tracking clicks on buttons. But before we can specifically make it for buttons, we need to create a trigger that'll capture clicks on all elements. Now you got clicks, all elements. We are going to only enable it on buttons. So go ahead and click on some clicks. This is where you specify a filter to only enable it on the buttons. So in order to do that, we need to specify certain condition. So here are a few of the conditions for us to enable this on. Since we are not clear on what we are going to specify here to only track the buttons, we can just leave all clicks as a trigger and then look at what gets fired to create our filter. So go ahead and call this all elements click trigger because we are tracking all elements. We haven't specified a filter. We are not going to attach it to a tag for Google Analytics. This way we can preview this in debug mode to see when we click a button, what kind of elements come up for us to specify a filter. So go ahead and save it and go click on preview. Now we're in a preview mode. Go to analytics higher and refresh it. So now we're going to click on these buttons to see if there is any common element that we can find. If we can't find, then we'll have to specify one button at a time. But let's go ahead and click on it. Remember to press control key so that it opens up in a new tab. Control job listing. And you'll see there are two summary. One is the click and the link click. So we clicked on an element that opened up a link. So there is a link click happen as well as click happen. Go ahead and click on it. And let's look at the variables. You can see there is a BTN job list. I already know that there is a common naming convention, which is BTN underscore and the name of the button. So which is held in click classes. Let's see if that's true for another button. Let's go ahead and click on available candidates and the new GTM click. See button candidate. You can look in variables here to figure out how you want to track it. So we know there is a common occurring theme here, which is BTN. So I'm going to use click classes and BTN to specify how I want to filter these clicks. So head over to Google Tag Manager and go to your trigger. Click on all elements, click trigger. And now do some clicks, click classes contain BTN. And also I am going to rename this to button click trigger because that's what we are doing. Button click trigger to properly name it. Now I go ahead and save changes. Now I'm going to create a new tag to track button clicks as events in Google Analytics. So go ahead and click on new. Universal Analytics. Track as events. Category is going to be button click. Action is the page path. And label is going to be as click text so we know what button was clicked just to verify click text value is coming go head over to your analytics hire or whatever your website is and we can see click text is available candidate so we can either use this or the button name whatever makes sense for you click text and then it's not going to trigger a new page view i don't want it google analytics setting is ga tracking id and then assign a trigger to it We've already defined a trigger, so I'm going to use button click trigger. Save it. I'm going to call it GA button click event. Save it. Refresh your preview mode. Every time you make a change, you have to refresh your preview mode if you want to see it in preview. Now our tag is attached to the trigger. So go ahead and refresh analytics higher. So only tag fired is that page view tracking Google Analytics tag. Go ahead and click on job listing. Remember to press control key so that it opens up a new tab and you do not lose view of this preview window. And now you'll see GA button click tag got fired. Click on it. Expand the window if you have to and you can see category button click label is job listing and action was the page path which is the default page. So everything looks good. Let's head over to Google Analytics to see in real time if this is coming across. And you can see there is one event right now. Button click, event label job listing and an event action was a default page.
So everything looks good. Let's go ahead and submit it. Go ahead and name and description, make sure it's published to a live environment and go ahead and publish it. So that's all for button tracking. In this lecture, I will show you how to deploy a tag via Google Tag Manager for Google Analytics to track downloads on your website as virtual page views. So to give you an example, here is this page I specifically created with two downloads, download a PDF and download a Word document. We will be tracking these in Google Analytics as virtual page views. So they show up in your page view report. So let's get started. First thing we need to do is either we can start from a tag or a trigger as we've seen before. So we're going to start with trigger. Go ahead and create a new trigger. Click on new. So here we have to use trigger is a click on a link. These are two links to download the documents. So let's just go ahead and click on just links. Since we only want to track the downloadable links, all links is not going to work. We have to pick a filter criteria on our trigger. So go ahead and click on some link clicks and then pick your trigger condition. In our example, let's go back to analytics higher and look in the browser bar. You'll see the document here says DOCX. It ends with DOCX. It's a word document and then a PDF dot PDF. So we will use this criteria to filter our trigger. If you want to also track other downloadable links, then you can enter that criteria as well. So let's go back to defining our trigger. Go ahead and click on click URL and then we will enter multiple conditions here. In this scenario, you'll need a regular expression to match those conditions. So go ahead and pick matches regex and put your criteria. So those who are familiar with Google Analytics already might be using regex. If not, you can learn all about regex and do complicated regular expression. For our case, we are only going to be using an or condition. So I'll show you how that's done. Go ahead and type in. PDF and then or condition, which is just a pipe character and put in other criteria. So DOCX other criteria could be and whatever you want. All these conditions have to be separated by pipe characters. Go ahead and give your trigger a name and then hit save. So now it's time to create a new tag that will track these clicks as virtual page views in Google Analytics. Go ahead and click on tags, new tag, universal analytics, and we are going to now track these as page views. Go ahead and click on more settings and click on fields to set. This is where we will set the name for your page. And when you hover over this field, you can click on the field and it'll open up a bunch of variables that are allowed in Google Analytics. You can also pick variables from this list as we saw earlier. But in our example, we are going to set the variables that we can pass to Google Analytics. One of the variables is page. Those who are familiar with virtual page tracking know that we have to send a page variable which gives the page a name that you will be able to see in your Google Analytics. So go ahead and type in page and then for your value you can either pick a variable from here or you can type in a value. Here I am going to use click URL but you can try different values here or you can type in. Alternatively, you can also give a unique name by typing it here. So like I did download or you can do content grouping saying download and then a click URL. So let's go ahead and use download click URL and save it. Now you can pick your trigger and we are going to use download click trigger. Also remember to give a name to your tag. So we'll call it GA download tag. Go ahead and save it and let's do preview and now you're in preview mode. Let's go to analytics higher and refresh it. So it opens up in a preview mode. All right. Now we're going to click on download PDF. Remember to press the control key so that it does not open in the same window because you want to see what's going on here and you can see links got fired. GA download tag got fired. Let's click on it and you can see it's tracking the page view. Now let's head over to Google Analytics to see how it came through. As you can see here, the active page is now tracked as a page view, download, and it gives the full URL. 
whatever name you gave in your page tracking that's available here so remember we did in our tag we gave the page name as download and the click URL so here you have it if you didn't want to click URL you can give click text or any other variable that's available in a field so that's it this is how you can track downloads as virtual page views or anything as virtual page views once you're done go ahead and submit it give a descriptive name and publish it and so that's it this is how you deploy a Google Analytics tag to track something as virtual page views every website these days have JavaScript these JavaScript when they fail silently they can cause a lot of trouble these JavaScript errors might result in a bad experience for your customers visitors on your site they might also prevent users from doing what they intend to do such as click on a button fill a form click on a link etc depends on how that javascript is implemented on your site the problems can be many a lot of time these javascript errors are undetectable but not anymore in this lecture i'm going to show you how to capture javascript errors using google tag manager once you capture them in google tag manager then you can send them to any tag that you would like in this lecture i will show you how to send them as events to Google Analytics. So let's get started. Google Tag Manager has inbuilt capability to capture all these JavaScript errors. So you have to enable certain variables which contain error information, then create a trigger that will capture all this information, and then finally create a tag to send all this information to that tag. In this case, Google Analytics tag to send them as events. So go ahead and click on variables configure and make sure all these error variables are checked error message which contains the message of the error the URL which triggered that error where the error happened the line number where the error happened and debug mode only tells you whether you are running Google Tag Manager in debug mode or not we are going to leave it as it is unchecked so these three variables are the ones we are going to use and send over to Google Analytics once we're done so go ahead and click X now you've got all these variables you can see them right here next step is to create a trigger to capture all this information new trigger and let's call it JavaScript error trigger click to create a new trigger scroll down and you have a JavaScript error trigger type go ahead and select it and we are going to capture all JavaScript errors we're gonna see what's going on go ahead and save it so now your trigger is created and it's ready and it can capture all the errors that are happening now we just need to send this information to a tag where we can start to track them so go ahead and click on tags new tag and let's call it GA JavaScript error tag or whatever name you prefer click in the middle to configure it universal analytics and we are going to capture it as an event so go ahead and click on event and you've got category action and label we're going to call the category as JavaScript error so that we can track all these errors in one place for action go ahead and click on this icon we are going to pick the variable that we are going to send over to Google Analytics and let's click error message and I also want to capture the line number where this error occurred so I am going to add that line number variable here as well so give a space and pick the other variable that we need which is error line You'll see that I did not use any double quotes, single quotes, ampersands, pluses, etc. This field or any of these fields are just simple text fields. All we are doing is picking a variable, a text value, and a variable. I'm going to give another space here. So now it'll be error message, line number, and error line. For the label, I'm going to pick another variable which will be the error URL so I can see error message the line the error occurred on and which is the URL that triggered this error everything else I'll leave as it is next I'm going to not count this as a page view 
So click on it's a non-interaction hit and then pick GA tracking ID to identify which property this event is going to. Go ahead and hit save. Now you can add your trigger. We already defined this trigger, so go ahead and pick it and save. Now your JavaScript error tag is available. So let's go ahead and preview this. And now you're in the preview mode. Go to your website where you push this to, analytics higher in this case. I've created this page specifically so I can test the JavaScript errors. Go ahead and reload it so that website can trigger preview mode. So you'll see GA tag got fired. I'm gonna click this button, which is going to trigger a JavaScript behind it. That JavaScript has a message and there is also an error. So go ahead and click on this button. As you can see, the message came up. JS test was clicked, it should register an error. This is the JavaScript. Go ahead and click OK. And now you'll see the JavaScript error tag got triggered. Click on it and you can see action uncaught reference i is not defined line number four that's your error message and line number category is javascript error and then where this occurred it occurred in common.js if you do a view source and here's your common.js click on it and we can see this javascript here is the alert message that you got this is the line that threw the error i purposely created an error in this javascript so we can capture it Now go ahead to Google Analytics and you can see this page that was triggered. Let's go ahead and look at real time and events. Here is a JavaScript error event uncaught. So you got all this information right here. Click on this uncaught reference error, which is your action line number and the URL that triggered the error. So that's it folks. Once you're done, go back to your tag manager and click on submit. Give a name. You can give any version name that you want. I'm calling it whatever I pushed out. And then description and go ahead and publish it. Now you'll start tracking JavaScript errors in Google Analytics. By capturing all these JavaScript errors, you will be able to create error-free website and give a great experience to your users as well as drive more conversions and clicks. Google Tag Manager works best when it's deployed alongside a data layer. It ensures flexibility, portability, and ease of implementation. Before I go and talk about how data layer is used along with Google Tag Manager, let's take a look and see what a data layer is. Here you're looking at how Google Tag Manager works without a data layer. So you've got your user interface, website, or app, whatever that is, and it has data all over the place. If your applications such as Google Tag Manager, Adobe, and any other analytics platforms have to use this data, then they have to go grab it from the page. And you have to write a code to get this data picked up from the page and pass it to your application. This is where a data layer really helps in. Data layer is a data structure that contains all the data and information that you want to pass from your website to other application and tools as they need it. So this is how it looks. All your data is contained within a data layer and it can be referenced from different places within your app or a website. And then whatever data third-party applications such as Google Tag Manager, Adobe Analytics or any other need to use it, they'll just go and pick it up from data layer. So you are basically separating user interface from the data layer and then data layer stays the same. You can change your interface, you can change these tools, and it's easily transferable. So it increases the flexibility that you have with your application. Here is a simple example of how a data layer looks like. Data layer is simply JavaScript object that contains other objects that has key value pairs. This will become clear as we go through this lecture. I'll show you an example of data layer on analytics higher. So if you go to analytics higher and go over to search jobs you have a bunch of jobs listed here let's go ahead and click on one of those and you can see here the company name is humana location is chicago and job type is ft which means full time go ahead and do view source on this page and here is a data layer that i have created for this page basically what this tells us what's the page category so I have given a variable called page category, which includes the name of the page and the listing location where I've given the name Chicago. That's the page we are currently viewing and job type is full time. 
If we go back and look at another page and do a view source, you'll see now it's such same page, job detail, location is now Boston, and this is also a full-time job. As a marketer, you won't be creating these data layers. Data layers are implemented by your developers. It makes their job easy. But by knowing the structure of a data layer, you will be able to use them in Google Tag Manager to reference these. For example, I want to create event tracking in Google Analytics, and I want to see which locations and types of jobs are being viewed. I can use event tracking in Google Analytics. So all I will have to do is use my Google Tag Manager to pull this value and pass on to Google Analytics. So next, we'll see that in action on how to do it. Now you got the concept of data layer clear, so we can start to figure out how to use that in Google Tag Manager. One thing I also wanna show you, if you want to see a data layers that are available on your web pages, you can go to your website and make sure you are in Chrome browser and then do developer tools. And once you're in this interface, you can start to type in data layer and you can see there are a bunch of data layers here. Click on it and you've got the data layer I was showing you, job type, listing location, and page category. You can do similar stuff within your Google Tag Manager interface. Now let's look at how this data layer looks like from Google Tag Manager. So go ahead and load your Google Tag Manager and put it in preview mode. So this is analytics higher, and I'm gonna put it in preview mode. So now go ahead and load analytics higher. So you'll see analytics higher in a preview mode. Go ahead and click on data layer. And here's the current data layer on the page. You can see page category, listing location is all empty. If you do a view source, you can see my data layer is empty. If I go ahead and browse over to search jobs and find a job, click on data layer, and you can see now the data layer is populated. So which means our data layer is working and is available to Google Tag Manager for us to start using it. Now we'll look at how to use this data layer in Google Tag Manager and pass it onto a tag. So first thing we're going to do is capture those data layer variables into the variables in Google Tag Manager. So go ahead and click on variable. What we are going to use is a user defined variable. So go ahead and click on new, click on next, and we are going to use a data layer variable, so click on it. And here you have to give a name for a data layer variable. Let's head over and see what our variables were called. Page category, listing location, and job type. We can grab all of these into Google Tag Manager. For now, I am going to use one of these and call it listing location. Type in listing location. Make sure it's using the same name that you're using, it's case sensitive. So after you do that, give it a name. So we're going to call it listing location and go ahead and save it. So now you got the variable that has listing location. So let's go ahead and create another variable. And this time we are going to use the job type. So call it job type. Again, it's a data layer variable and it's called job type. Let's make sure, now it's capital J. So job type, it's case sensitive. Go ahead and save it. Now you got two variables from data layer. Let's go ahead and create a tag and pass it over to Google Analytics. Let's go ahead and click on new tag and call it data layer event tag, click to create a new tag, it's universal analytics, and we are going to track it as an event. Our category is going to be data layer, action is listing location, label is job type. I'm just showing you how do you can use data layer variables in your tracking, so it doesn't matter what I'm choosing here, I just wanna show you how it works. Now you're set, all you have to do is make sure it's non an interaction head so go ahead and click true it's in a non-interaction head and select your GA tracking ID so with that go ahead and save it and go ahead and click save tag now I want to assign a trigger to this tag so click on it again and let's put a triggering criteria here 
and I want it to be fired on all pages. Go ahead and save it. And now you're all done. Close this window and let's reload the preview mode. Go back to your site and then reload it. Now you can see what tags got fired here. Data layer event tag got fired. Click on it and you can see action was San Francisco, category was data layer, and label was FT. These are the things that we are passing to Google Analytics. Just to verify, you can go to Google Analytics. So in real time, you can go to events and you can see there is a data layer event category. Event action is San Francisco. Click on it and you can see event action and event label. So you just pass the information from data layer over to a tag using Google Tag Manager. Now you can pass this information to whichever tag you want, but I just showed you how you can pass this to Google Analytics. This is how you can start to pull information from data layer into any tags. Once everything is verified, go ahead and submit it, give a name and description, and go ahead and publish it. So that's it. You just now published a tag that pulls the information from data layer and passes on to Google Analytics as events. So far we looked at what a data layer is and how Google Tag Manager can pull information from the data layer and pass it on to various tags. Another feature of a data layer is that you can actually write information dynamically to the data layer. This can be done via the code within your page. For example, in an e-commerce site, if you want to update the total amount of products in the cart, you can do that dynamically by passing information to the data layer. Once that information is passed to data layer, it can trigger an event that can be captured in Google Tag Manager and then passed on to any tag. In this lecture, I will show you how to push information over to a data layer and then how you can pull that information via Tag Manager. So let's get started. Syntax for passing information over to the data layer is data layer dot push and then you pass in key value pairs. So in this case, I'm passing action, add to favorite, job ID, one, two, three. This will update the information in data layer. Now your Google Tag Manager can read this information from data layer. However, Google Tag Manager won't know when this information was updated. When Google Tag Manager tries to read it and it's available, it will be able to read it. In order for you to proactively tell Google Tag Manager that new information has been pushed, you can trigger an event and then Google Tag Manager can listen to that event and immediately respond. So the way to trigger that event is by making a small change in your code. The code to trigger an event is simply adding an event like I did in this case, which is event and then add to favorite. You can give whatever name you want for your event. And then you have to configure Google Tag Manager to listen to this event. As soon as Google Tag Manager listens to this event, you can take action via Google Tag Manager. So we'll see this in action. Here I have analyticshire.com. On a job listing, I have a button which allows users to add it to favorite. So they can save these job listings by clicking on this button. Another thing I have behind the scene, add to favorite will trigger some content into the data layer, as well as also set an event, which we will be then able to capture within Google Tag Manager. So let's do a view source. As you do the view source, you'll see I have one data layer by default on the page, which is right here. And as you scroll down, you'll see there is a button, add to favorite, that also makes a data layer push. Action, add to favorite. Job ID, passes the ID of the job. And then also sets an event, add to favorite. This is the event that Google Tag Manager can listen to and pass any of the information to a tag. So we'll see how that's done. I'm gonna go ahead and close the view source and go ahead and put Google Tag Manager in preview mode. So now Google Tag Manager is in preview mode. I am going to go back to Analytics Hire and refresh the page so that it loads in the preview mode. So here it is in the preview mode. You can see the current data layer. You've got the page category, listing location, and job type. This is the default data layer that we looked 
in the view source. Let me show it again. It's right here. Next, I am going to go ahead and click on add to favorite button. And it sets the data layer variables. Data layer values after this message, you got event, action add to favorite and the job ID. Now you should be able to listen to this event and capture these values in Google Tag Manager. I just wanted to show you how you can push the values by using data layer dot push and push the values over to data layer. So once again, let me show you the syntax. Push action add to favorite job ID and event. That's the same thing that's available here. So the syntax is simple. It's data layer dot push and then your key value pairs. Now we'll take a look and see how this value gets translated in Google Tag Manager. So go ahead and close this. Go back to Google Tag Manager. So before I go ahead and use those values, let's create variables to capture the values from our new data layer. Variables. Go ahead and click on new user defined variable. And let's call it data layer action. I'm just using data layer to specify this is coming from data layer and the variable is going to be called action. Click new and let's pick data layer and the variable name is action. Keep in mind this is case sensitive to make sure it matches this value right here. That's the name of the key. Go ahead and save it. Now we are going to create another one and this will be for the ID which is job ID. Again, you can give it whatever name you want, but that's what I'm calling it. Go ahead and save it. Now we got the variables. So next we have to do is listen to that event. So for that, I'm going to create a new trigger. Click on trigger, new, click again. And here you have to select a custom event because this is not the Windows default event. It's a custom event that gets passed by the data layer. So go ahead and click on custom event. Then you have to give the name of the event. So let's go back and check what the name of the event was. It's called add to favorite. It is case sensitive. So we have to type exactly the same. So what this is doing is it's actually triggering Google Tag Manager whenever it sees the event called add to favorite. I'm going to call it data layer add to favorite event. Again, I'm specifying where this value is coming from and what this is about. Go ahead and save it. Manager is now listening to this event. And whenever that event happens, you can fire a tag. So I'm going to fire a tag. Go ahead and click on tags. Let's go ahead and click on new. And let's call it data layer push event. I'm just giving it a name. In this case, I'm calling it data layer push event. Go ahead and click on new tag. We're going to pass it to Google Analytics. Pick universal analytics and then event tracking. So for category, I'm going to call it data layer push. For action, we are going to use the variable that we created earlier. So you'll see data layer action. For label, I am going to use the job ID. So data layer job ID. We want to make it non-interaction here. So we're not counting it against the page views. And then pick our GA tracking ID. Go ahead and save it. And now let's pick our trigger. Data layer add to favorite trigger. Go ahead and save it. Now our tag is ready. Go ahead and refresh the preview mode. You have to do this every time you make a change. Once that's done, go ahead and reload your web page. So your web page is now in a preview mode and go to data layer. Another thing I'm going to also do is to open Google Analytics so that we can see how this tag gets fired. So go ahead to Google Analytics, click on events so that we can see it in real time. Right now you'll see it's all blank. So let's go ahead and go back to our analytics hire and click on add to favorite button. This gets clicked 
you can see the values in the data layer let's go back to events here and there is a data layer push event action is add to favorite and event label is 11488 so you can see that how by creating a custom event you are able to capture changes in data layer and then pass it over to whatever tag you desire in this case we were passing the tag over to google analytics so let's recap what we did here uh, just to be clear i know it's a little complex so what we did is one is the data layer push this is how you push it you do data layer dot push and then your key value pairs and then also an event that can be captured as custom event we created variables to capture these two values in the data layer then created a trigger and the order of trigger or tags doesn't matter but i just wanted to show you step by step so created a trigger data layer add to favorite custom trigger that listen to that event and as soon as it listened to that event it captured the values when we created the tag so tag was triggered on that event and then we saw this tag capturing those variables as soon as it listened to this event so that's it this is a key concept anytime you are passing values to data layer you can do a custom event and that custom event will tell Google Tag Manager that the values have changed. Contact Form 7 is a popular WordPress plugin that allows you to create contact forms and other forms on your WordPress website or a blog. In this lecture, I will show you how to track form submissions via Google Tag Manager. It's a bit complicated, so I'm going to talk about few things about Contact Form 7 so you can understand how this works in Google Tag Manager. Before I dive into the process of how to track form submission via Google Tag Manager, I wanna show you what a Contact Form 7 looks like. So here's an example on Global Analytics Academy, which is a WordPress site. You have this form that's created by Contact Form 7 plugin. So you can see that here, contact form, and this form right here is a contact form 7. It has an ID assigned. So every time you create a form, it'll have an ID. You can have multiple forms. In this case, I just have contact support form, which is available under career support. If I were to create under like blog or wires or some other place, I can have multiple forms on a site. And each form will have a unique ID. So this is what it is, ID and the title, and it's contact form seven. So this is how it looks on the site. I'm gonna go to Google Tag Manager and put it in a preview mode. Once in a preview mode, I'm going to go back and refresh this page so we can see what happens when the form submission happens. When in preview mode, just go ahead and click around all the tags, variables, data layers, etc. So you have familiar with what's available and you can see the difference once a submit button is clicked. Standard data layer, standard DOM ready information, page views, variables. It's pretty standard stuff that's available on this window. And now I am going to fill this form and see the change. I fill this form, I'm gonna go ahead and click on send. And when send happens, you can see nothing changed within Google Tag Manager variables. There's nothing happened. It's pretty much the same standard stuff. Since Contact Form 7 does not fire any link or button event and any data layer event, it can't be easily tracked via Google Tag Manager. However, Contact Form 7 does fire a few custom DOM events, which are not visible in Google Tag Manager but we can enable Google Tag Manager to listen to these custom DOM events and that's what I'm going to show you in this lecture. However, Contact Form 7 does fire a few custom DOM events. These events can't be captured directly in Google Tag Manager, but you can configure Google Tag Manager to track those. In order to do that, you need to write a small JavaScript code and use data layer to track these events. Again, before I go and show you the code and how to use data layer to track these events let's look at what 
those custom DOM events are. There are five of them. One is WPCF7 invalid. So WPCF, all it means is WordPress contact form seven. And then it gives you the name of what happened. So invalid means form submission was completed, but mail wasn't sent as there were some invalid inputs. Next one is for the spam. It basically means everything went successfully, but mail wasn't sent because likely a spam activity was detected. Then a successful event which says mail was sent. Another one which triggers when the mail sent failed, everything worked, but mail sent failed. And then submit where form submission was completed, whether or not any of the other events happened, whether the mail went out or not, whether spam was triggered or not. So these are the custom events that we can capture and then trigger Google Tag Manager. So how do you do that? Here is a bit of custom JavaScript that you need to add so that this JavaScript can listen to these contact form seven events and then add it to a data layer. Remember data layer, we talked about that. How do you push values into a data layer? We are going to use the same technique here. So I'm gonna go give you a brief overview of how this works. You got this JavaScript, we are basically adding an event listener, which listens to the event that you want to see. In our case, we are saying when the mail was sent and form was submitted, so everything was successful, let's listen to that event and only take these action when that event happens. So document dot add event listener, we are adding an event listener and then listening for that event WPCF seven mail sent. And if that happens, then we're pushing some values into data layer and we're calling it event contact form successful. And then form ID is we are just capturing that form ID. Remember that ID I talked about each form gets a unique ID. We are going to capture that ID here. And once we capture these things, then we can pass it onto any tag that we desire. And we'll see this in action in next few minutes. Step one for tracking contact form seven is to add an event listener so that we can listen to the successful or failed events from contact form seven. In this example, we will use WPCF seven mail sent as the event that we want to listen to. We want to track that the contact form was successfully submitted and the email was sent out. So here is a piece of JavaScript code that needs to go on your page. Now there are two ways to do it. One, you can directly add this piece of code on your page, web page, or you can deploy a tag using Google Tag Manager to push out this JavaScript. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. So go ahead and click new, and we are going to create this new tag. Let's call this tag CF7Listener. Click in the middle, and this is going to be a custom HTML tag. What we are doing here is we are deploying a piece of JavaScript onto our page. Using custom HTML, we can deploy any kind of JavaScript or HTML onto the page based on the trigger condition. For our case, we will use triggering on every page. On every page, we are going to deploy a listener. So go ahead and click on custom HTML and type in the HTML that I showed you earlier which is this. I will make this JavaScript available for you so that you can just go ahead and copy and paste this code. All this JavaScript is doing is deploying a listener to listen for this event. And once it finds it, it's going to push an event in data layer and also pass in the form ID. You can pass in any other variables. Remember in data layer, you need key value pairs as well as events so that Google Tag Manager can listen to it. Once you're done, go ahead and save it. And then you add a trigger and it will be on every page. Now you could write a code to only put this on the contact form seven page, but we are going to deploy it so that your whole site is ready. And whenever you put a form, it's ready to listen to it. Go ahead and save this. Now you got the listener. Now let's see how this listener works in action. So go ahead and put your Google Tag Manager in preview mode. Now it's in preview mode. Go to Global Analytics Academy or your site and refresh it. Now you'll see that CF7 listener got fired on this page. Data layer still does not have value. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this form and submit it or send it. Once that's done, you'll see CF7 submit in your summary 
and you can see the current values in the data layer. Once the values are pushed out in the data layer, now your Google Tag Manager can listen to it. So let's go back and finish what we were doing in Google Tag Manager. Now we are ready to create our new tag. But before we do that, let's create a variable to store the form ID. Go ahead and click on variable, go to user defined, and let's call it CF7 form ID. Click on new. The value is coming from data layer, so click data layer. And the variable name should be the one right here, which is the form ID. Remember, this is case sensitive. Go ahead and save it. Now we'll create a new tag. So click on tag, click on new, and let's call this tag CF7 submit. Click in the middle to create the tag. Pick Universal Analytics because we are passing this to Google Analytics and we'll pass it as an event. Category is going to be CF7 form action submit you can give whatever name you want and label we are going to use the form id as the label so go ahead and click on this icon and pick cf7 form id it's a non-interaction hit and your google analytics tracking id once you're done go ahead and click save and then add your trigger for the trigger we will need to add a trigger so that we can listen to event in data layer so go ahead and click on new and let's call this trigger CF7 data layer. Click new and we are going to use custom event. Remember that from our data layer push lecture and our event name should match the event name in the data layer. So it's CF7 submit and this trigger fires on all custom events. So go ahead and save it. So now you got the trigger. So what we just did is we first deploy a tag to capture CF form seven successful event. When that event was detected, data layer values were pushed out. And then we created a variable to store the form ID and another tag to trigger once we see the successful form submission. So go ahead and save this and refresh the preview mode. So once that's done, refresh your Google Analytics Academy. So you can see it in the preview mode. And I'm also going to open Google Analytics so that we can see the values coming in. So I'm in the event section. You can see there are no events. So I'm going to go back to Google Analytics Academy and submit the form. Click on send. You can see that C7 submit was fired. Values in the data layer were updated. Go to Google Analytics. You can see CF7 form submit happen. Click on it and you can see the form ID as well. So this is it. Just to recap. So one, we created a tag that listens to form seven submit mail sent event. And once it's detected, it fires an event and sends a value to data layer. Then we created a variable to pick this form ID value. We go to variables and we pick this value. Then we create another tag called CF seven submit. This tag passes the values over to Google Analytics and it's triggered when it sees a new event being triggered in data layer. So that's it. In this lecture, you learn how to use custom HTML functionality of Google Tag Manager, as well as how do you use that functionality together with data layer to listen to a successful contact form seven submit. In this lecture, we will look at how to deploy Facebook pixel using Google Tag Manager. Before I go through the steps of deploying Facebook pixel, I want to make sure everybody understands what a Facebook pixel is. So what is Facebook pixel? A Facebook pixel is a code that's provided by Facebook for you to place on your website. This code helps you track conversions from your Facebook advertising. It helps you optimize those ads, build targeted audience for your future advertising, as well as allow you to remarket to those people who have visited your site and taken some kind of action on your website. Now let's go to Facebook and see where to get this pixel. To get the Facebook pixel, go over to facebook.com slash ads manager. You will have to log into your Facebook account if you're not logged in. Once logged in, you will see a screen that looks something like this. Up on the corner are ad manager options. Click on ad manager and then go over to pixels. This is where you will be able to get your pixel. Click on pixels. And in this screen, you will be able to create a Facebook pixel as well as read about what a pixel can do. Go ahead and click on create a pixel. 
and give your pixel a name on a personal account you can only create one pixel per ad account on the business accounts you can add up to 10 additional pixels but the process to add them via Google Tag Manager is going to be the same I'm going to call it Global Analytics Academy pixel and click on create you can see there is an option to add this pixel via Google Tag Manager however many people have reported problems via using this option so we are going to use a different option in this case click on manually install the code yourself so you can see the instructions here if you're going to manually install this pixel on your web page then you will put it in the head section however we already have Google Tag Manager installed in our head section so all we have to do is copy this portion head over to your tag manager when in tag manager go ahead and click on new tag give your tag a name I'm going to call it FB pixel tag and click on tag configuration in the tag type click on custom HTML and paste your pixel code here in this tag you'll notice that there is a no script tag as well this no script tag allows Facebook to collect information on those people who have disabled the JavaScript however when we are putting this code in the head section of a web page no script does not get fired that's how HTML works so presence of this tag is not going to do anything when you are using Google Tag Manager implementation assuming there are very few users who have JavaScript disabled and if they have JavaScript disabled there are a lot of other things that won't work on your site you are safe to remove this code so go ahead and select this and clean this out so that we have a clean installation once done go ahead and hit save and the next screen asks you to add a trigger click on add trigger we want to fire this tag on all the pages that's what we're doing we are collecting audience information as they interact with our site no matter which page they are on so click on all pages and save it now your Facebook pixel is ready now I'm going to verify to make sure everything is working as expected so click on preview so that we can put the tag manager in the preview mode now we are in the preview mode go over to your site wherever you are implementing this code in my case it's Global Analytics Academy if you have already loaded your website in a separate tab then you will have to refresh it to put it in the preview mode as you can see when we browsed over this every pixel tag got fired because we are finding it on every web page click on every pixel tag and you can see this is the code that got fired now you can head back to Google Tag Manager and click on submit button to submit this tag to the live site give a version name and a detailed description and make sure you're pushing to the live environment go ahead and click on publish and now your tag is live soon you'll start to see your audience information in Facebook ad manager it might take up to 20 minutes before you can see your audience information in Facebook ad manager head back to Facebook ad manager to finish the steps of installation back on Facebook on install pixel code page you have an option to send traffic to your pixel this will be the test traffic since we already verified that via Google Tag Manager you do not need to do that simply click on continue on the next screen you have an option to track users who take specific actions on your website tracking these actions will allow you to create audience segment that you can target for example if somebody purchased a product on your website you can specifically target those users on Facebook by using purchase event tracking currently there are nine predefined events that you can track in Facebook but you can also do custom event tracking we will look at event tracking in the next lecture for now we just want to look how base Facebook pixel works so go ahead and click done and now Facebook will start to collect the data on the users who come to your site after about 20 minutes when you refresh your page on Facebook ad manager you will be able to see the traffic coming through as you can see on this screen one event was received that's one page view that's the one I did when I was showing you the installation of this pixel so there you have it now you can start to collect all your audience information 
and use Facebook pixel to target them via Facebook ads. In this lecture, I will show you how to do event tracking in Facebook pixel. Facebook event tracking allows you to track specific actions that users have taken on your site. Based on these actions, you can then create custom audience in Facebook to target specific ads. For example, if somebody has viewed a particular piece of content, you can then target them with similar content. Or if somebody has purchased a particular product, then you can target them with ads about either a complimentary product or similar product. In addition to these actions, you can also pass other information related to those actions. So let's take a look and see how you can install this pixel on your website. Go to your Facebook ad manager account, facebook.com slash ads manager. Once in the account, click on setup. Setup gives you the same options that we looked at in the previous lecture. Go ahead and click on manually install the code yourself and scroll down. I'm assuming you have already installed the base pixel. That's a requirement before you can do event tracking. So if you haven't installed this base pixel, then please go back to the previous lecture and follow the steps to install the base pixel. If you already have base pixel in place, then go ahead and click on continue. On this screen, you will be able to get the code that's required to track certain events. There are nine predefined events by Facebook, which you are seeing on your screen. And if these events do not satisfy what you're looking for, then you can also create custom events. The process to add the code is similar in all these cases, except the customization that is specific to each event. In order to get the code, you simply toggle this button next to the event and Facebook gives you the code that needs to go on your pages. Scroll down and this is the base code that's required to track the purchase event in this example. You will need to take this code and put it on your order confirmation page or purchase completion page because that will track a purchase being completed. In addition to the base tag, you can also pass certain parameter. For example, here are two. What's the conversion value and what's the currency? You can pass this information along with the base tag. There are two ways to set this value. Either you can hard code it right here. For example, if I put dollar sign and currency, Facebook takes this information and appends that with the name value pair. The other option is to use a variable. Variables allow you to grab values from your data layer or from web page and then pass it to your pixels. Syntax for using the variable in Google Tag Manager is curly brackets and provide the name of the variable that's available in Google Tag Manager. So this variable name will be the actual name of the variable that you will be using in your Google Tag Manager. And we'll look at that example. So don't worry about it. I just wanna show you the syntax. In addition to these two parameters that Facebook is suggesting, you can also add other parameters. Click on this, add another parameter box, and here are other options related to this event that you can use in your code. Please note that Facebook won't keep track of the changes you made or the parameters you added. Once you click done, then all these changes are gone. So make sure to copy whatever code you need and then press done. After you're done copying and click done, you are ready to go to Google Tag Manager and add this code. Now let's take a look at an example and see how all this will work. I'm going to use analytics higher for this example. If I want to target all the people who have looked at this job listing page with relevant ads, then I want to track them in Facebook. Not only that, to make it relevant to them, I also want to know the location of the job that they're looking at so that I can create relevant job listings for them by targeting them on Facebook. So just to recap, somebody comes to my site, looks at a job listing, then they leave. And when they are on Facebook, I want to target them with an ad that shows another job listing from the same location that they were looking at. So I wanna bring them back to my site. That's the purpose. If you remember from the previous lecture, the location is available in a data layer. To look at that, 
go ahead and click on view source and listing location is available in the data layer so we will be using the variable from data layer and pass that information over to the tag let's go back to facebook the tag that i'm going to use is view content so click on view content here is the base tag i am also going to add another parameter and call it content type and in this content type i am going to use location variable i will rename it to the actual variable name in google tag manager since i don't remember the name of the variable i'm going to use i'm just creating a placeholder with variable name once we go to google tag manager i will change it to the actual name one more thing i want to highlight if you hover over the i next to the parameter name you will get information on what type of value is allowed for that parameter for example in the currency you can only pass standard three letter iso currency code the content type is a free form field so you can pretty much pass anything you want in this field once you have your code copy it by clicking and click done go over to tag manager and create a new tag click on new again and call it fb job listing view click on tag configuration again this is a custom html just like before and put on this code now a few things we will have to do here one i need to replace this with the actual variable value which we'll grab in a minute then i also have to make sure that this tag gets fired after the base facebook pixel tag gets fired that's the requirement this tag can only be fired after the facebook base pixel tag has fired in order to do that click on advanced setting and go down to tag sequencing and fire a tag before fb job listing view fires that means we need to fire a tag before this tag can be fired so click on it and then select the tag that needs to get fired before this which is the fb pixel tag select it and go ahead and click save now you need to add a trigger now you do not want to fire this tag on all the pages. You only want to fire this tag when somebody views a job listing, right? So what we need for our trigger is the URL of the page where this tag is going to be fired. In our case, that is jobdetails.asp. So we are going to use this URL to create a trigger. So go back to Google Tag Manager and create a new trigger. Let's call it job detail view. Click on tag configuration, click on page view, and then select some page views where page URL contains job detail, right? So we only want to fire this tag when the page URL contains the job detail, ASP. That's all. Go ahead and save it. And now we've got this Facebook job listing view that's going to pass location and content type and will fire after Facebook base tag has fired and will be firing on job detail view. Last thing remaining here is the location variable. Let's go ahead and save it and we'll come back to it. Click on variables, scroll down. I've already created a listing location variable in the previous lecture. We will use the same one. So click on listing location. That's the variable we are going to use. It's a data layer variable. Just to refresh your memory, this variable name needs to come directly from data layer. So whatever you specified in data layer is the name that you will provide here. If you go back to the view source, you can see listing location. That's the variable that contains this value. That's exactly the same thing we're using here. So let's go ahead and copy this. It has to be exact same and go back to our tag, find the tag, click on it, and change this value to listing location. That's the variable we are using. Go ahead and save it, and you're done. Refresh the preview mode. Go back to analytics higher, and refresh it. So you'll see as I refresh it, Facebook pixel tag got fired 
and Facebook job listing view tag got fired. Click on Facebook job listing view and you can see it tracked as view event and content type Dallas got fired. After a few minutes, you can log into your Facebook ads manager and start to see all this activity under activity tab. So that's it. This is how you install your Facebook pixel using Google Tag Manager. These days, most of the sites have long pages, which means users have to scroll down to view the complete page. As a site owner, you always wonder if people are scrolling down or not. To help you solve this problem and help you track how people are scrolling through your content, Google Tag Manager has built-in variables that you can use and pass it to analytics tools such as Google Analytics. In this lecture, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's dive in. <clears throat> Open Google Tag Manager and click on Variables. Here we are going to configure built-in variables. So click on configure and scroll down. There you have built-in variables that Google Tag Manager provides. Scroll depth threshold allows you to measure the percentage of scroll. Scroll depth units allows you to measure scroll depth in pixels. So go ahead and click on that as well. This last variable provides you information about the direction of the scroll whether it's vertical scroll or horizontal scroll. Most of the time, pages are long. In that case, it's a vertical scroll. However, many sites have white pages. In that case, the user has to scroll horizontally to get to the content. I'm going to go ahead and select that as well. So you got three variables now. Once done, click on X to get out. And now you have three variables available to you. So after this, you have to create a trigger and a tag. So let's go ahead and create a trigger. Click on triggers and new trigger. Click in the middle to create a new trigger and scroll down and pick scroll depth in the user engagement. I'm going to call this trigger scroll trigger. And this trigger will fire on all pages. Go ahead and save it. Once you try to save it, it's going to ask you some more information, whether you're trying to measure vertical scroll or horizontal scroll. In my case, it's only vertical scroll, so I'm going to pick vertical scroll. And then I have two options of measuring the scroll. I can measure it by percentage, what percentage of the page is scrolled by the user, or I can measure it by pixels. How many pixels is the user scrolling? Remember those two variables? Scroll depth threshold and scroll depth units. The scroll depth threshold will keep track of the percentages while scroll depth units keeps track of the pixels. In this case, I'm going to use a percentage. I want to see if the users are scrolling beyond the 50% mark of my page. I can set those percentages here. Keep in mind, all the percentages that users scroll through will be triggered as user is scrolling through this. So if you set the mark at 50, 75, and 100, a user scrolling to 100% mark will also trigger 50 and 75. So one user scrolling down to the end of the page will trigger multiple of these percentages. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the reports. I am going to mark 50, 75, and 100. So 50, this way I can keep track of how many users are scrolling beyond the 50% mark. I'll leave it on all pages because that's what I want to do. Once done, go ahead and click on save. Now your trigger is done. Next, let's define a tag that'll fire when this trigger happens. So click on tags and click on new. This will be scroll depth tag. In the tag configuration, I am going to send it to Google Analytics as an event. Before we create a tag, let's first assign a trigger. So go ahead and click on new to pick the trigger that we want and pick our scroll trigger. And now let's define a tag. Click in the middle 
to create a new tag and we are going to be sending this tag to Google Analytics. So pick Google Analytics and for track type we will be sending this information as an event. So go ahead and pick event. For event you have to configure certain values as you remember from previous lectures. If not then go ahead as you remember from previous lectures. If you're not familiar with event tracking, please refer back to the previous lectures. I am going to give a name, scroll depth to the category. For the action, I am going to pick the name of the page where this scrolling is happening. For that, let's pick a variable. Click here to pick the variable and we will pick page path. And then for label, I am going to pick the scroll depth. So go ahead and click again on variable and this time we are going to pick scroll depth threshold. This is the variable that's keeping track of the percentages scroll. I'm going to leave this as a non-interaction hit so that scrolling does not impact your bounce rate. And then for Google Analytics setting let's pick the predefined variable which contains our Google Analytics ID. We'll leave everything as it is and go ahead and save it. Now our tag is ready. Now our tag is ready. Let's put our tag manager in preview mode and also make sure to have our Google Analytics ready so we can see it in real time. So go to your Google Analytics and put it in real time and let's click on events. So I'm looking at events, events in last 30 minutes. Now I'm going to go to the site where this trigger is enabled and refresh it so I can see what's firing here. As you can see the scroll trigger did not fire so now I am going to scroll on this page to see when the trigger fires. So go ahead and scroll as I'm scrolling through there scroll depth trigger got fired. It fired one time, so that means I just crossed the 50% threshold. Scrolling further, it got fired again. That's 75% mark. And all the way down, and it got fired three times. So it fired at 50, 75, and 100%. Just to make sure these values got to Google Analytics, let's go back to Google Analytics and check the events. And there you have it, 150 and 75 under scroll drop trigger and it's on the default page. So you just learned how to track scroll depth on pages using Google Tag Manager and passing that information to Google Analytics as events. When designing their web pages, marketers try to put a lot of information on these pages. They have lots of elements. And often the question comes up, is anybody even looking at that piece of content or that banner or that image we have placed on our website? This is where Google Tag Manager can help. And in this lecture, I'm going to show you how to answer that question using Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So let's take a look on how to do this. Here is a web page that I have on my site. On this page, if you scroll down, there is agenda of the course. Why should you be taking this course? I want to understand if anybody is scrolling and looking at the agenda. One way to do this is by looking at the scroll depth of users that we looked in the last lecture. Tracking the scroll depth of the users might not be the most efficient way in some cases. Like in this example, all I want to track is if users are scrolling far enough to see the agenda section. That's all I care about. In that case, scroll depth is an overkill. So I am going to use another feature of Google Tag Manager. Let's go to Google Tag Manager and see how it works. Let's create the required tags and triggers so that we can track how many people are viewing the agenda section when they arrive on that page. So for that, we will need a tag that we will send to Google Analytics and it's going to be an event tag. So let's go ahead and create that. Click on tags, click on new, 
and click in the middle again pick Google Analytics Universal Analytics and then track type is going to be event in category action label give whatever makes sense in this case I am going to call it element visibility as my category action is agenda view view and for the label I'm going to put the page on which agenda was view go ahead and click to pick the variable that we need to use here and its page path is what I'm going to use value is optional so I'm gonna leave it empty and this will be a non interaction hit we do not want it to trigger a new page view so we'll leave it at false and then pick your Google Analytics ID we already have that in GA ID so I'm gonna pick that whichever variable you are storing your Google Analytics ID use that here we don't need to worry about anything else and go ahead and hit save now it's going to ask you to add a trigger click on add a trigger this is where the magic happens click on the plus sign to create a new trigger and let's call this trigger element view trigger click in the middle or on this pencil icon to create a new trigger this time scroll down and pick element visibility this is the predefined trigger type that tracks if a particular element was visible within users frame or not click on it now you have few options you have a selection method here you can use the ID of the element that you want to track so let's go to our page and look at that element ID here's our page let's do a view source to see what's available around agenda and go down and find agenda right here so here is a div ID course agenda that we can use to see if this div came into users view if users scroll down to this point definitely they are looking at the agenda so I'm gonna copy this and then go back to Google Tag Manager and paste this in element ID if you're not familiar with how IDs work in HTML then I suggest taking an intro level course on HTML and then you have to pick when do you want to fire this trigger once for every page once per element as you have multiple elements if they show up or every time an element appears on screen I'm going to use once per page as that's all I want to track you can pick whichever works for your business case then you have to pick what percentage of that element user should have viewed I'm gonna leave it at default of 50% which means if user scrolled far enough and saw the 50% of agenda I'm all good you can set it to whatever percentage makes sense for your business and then you can set how long they should have viewed that element this comes in handy to see if people are actually reading that element or not keep in mind this is milliseconds so 1000 milliseconds is one second I'm looking for minimum of five second attention on this particular element so I'm going to type in 5000 I'm going to leave everything else as it is and click on save now we are ready all we have to do is give our tag a name so I'm going to call it element visibility tag once done click on save let's go in a preview mode to see how this works so click on preview go back to the site and reload it let's scroll down to our element that we're trying to track keep going down and here it is so we're gonna wait five seconds and here it pops up click on this variable to see what's being passed here so you can see category action and label now let's go to Google Analytics to see how it looks and there you have it in real time under events events in last 30 minutes you can see element visibility click on it 
So agenda view got fired on this page. Before I end this lecture, I want to also point out that there are two variables that Google Tag Manager provides for you to understand how people are progressing through these element visibility. So to look at these variables and how to use them, go to your Google Tag Manager and click on variables. These are built-in variables, so click on configure under built-in variables. On the next screen, scroll down and you'll see visibility. That is percent visible and on-screen duration. Percent visible contains the information of what percentage of the element was visible when the tag got fired. On-screen duration contains the information about the time users spent on that element when the tag was fired. To use these variables in your tags, go ahead and click on these variables. Now they are available for you to use. Click on X, go back, and let's go back to our tags. Click on the element visibility tag. Let's modify it and use these two variables. Click on it and click on pencil icon to edit it. Here you have event tracking parameters and we can add these two variables to one of these parameters. Just to show you how it works, I'm just going to modify the action label. So keep the agenda view, but I'm going to add these two variables here. So I'm going to separate them by a dash here and then click on plus icon to pick the variables. First is on-screen duration, so let's pick that and then move, put another dash. It's just a separator I'm using. Click on plus sign again and pick percent visible. Now my action will have agenda view, on-screen duration and percent visible. Once done, click on save. Put your tag manager in preview mode and go to your site. Now let's scroll to the agenda section. Here we have it and it should fire. It got fired. Let's go to Google Analytics real time, event tracking, and here you can see it. It got fired, element visibility, it got fired after 5,000 milliseconds and the percent view was 96.3. So I viewed 96.3% of that element. So that's it. You just learned how to use element visibility trigger in Google Tag Manager to track if people are watching particular elements on the page and also track how much time they are spending as well as what percentage of that element they are looking at. Do you embed YouTube videos in your web pages and then wonder? If people are looking at those videos, how far are they progressing through the videos? If the answer is yes, then this lecture is for you. In this lecture, I will show you how to track embedded YouTube videos on your web pages. So let's dive in and take a look what Google Tag Manager can do. Here in front of you, I have a page with embedded YouTube video. I want to track user interaction with this video. Let's go to Google Tag Manager and see how to set this up. There are three things that we are going to need to track YouTube videos. One is variables, then we'll create a trigger and a tag. So let's first set up the variables. Click on variables. There are built-in variables that Google Tag Manager provides for us to track these videos. So click on configure and scroll down and there you have all the video tracking variables. Video provider, which tracks who the provider of this video is. In this case, it's going to be YouTube. Video status, tracks the status of the video, such as start, complete, pause, etc. Video URL is the actual URL of the video on YouTube. Then you have the title of the video. Video duration is how long is that video in total. Video current time, keeps track of the time within the video when a specified event occurs. So let's say if you pause a video at two minute mark, then the current time will be two minutes. Video percent 
it stores the information about the percentage of the video that has been played to that point. And then video visible keeps track of if the video is visible within users view or not. So if somebody is playing a video, but it's under the fold, so they can't see it, the visible will be false. Otherwise it'll be true. So let's go ahead and select all these variables. Once we start to use them in our tags, they'll become more clear to you. So go ahead and click on X. We're done. All these video variables are now added. Now we are ready to create our tag and trigger. Let's create a trigger first. Click on triggers and click on new. Let's call this trigger YouTube trigger. Click on this pencil icon or this icon in the middle to create the trigger. Scroll down and pick YouTube from user engagement. Start and complete are already selected. Start means the video started, complete means it's completed. Then you can also collect status such as pause, seeking and buffering as the video is going through. So let's go ahead and select it. And then you can track the progress of the video, how far along the user is in this video. Click on progress and it opens up options for you to set whether you want to see the progress in percentages or time thresholds. Percentages are such as when user completes 10% of the video, 25, 50, etc. And time thresholds are when the user is finishing 10 seconds, 20 seconds, etc. Let's stick with percentages. We are going to track 10, 25, 50, 75, and 100%. Then Another option is to add JavaScript API support to all YouTube videos. Some of the videos on YouTube do not have JavaScript API support, so they are not going to be tracked by default. In order to track all the videos, go ahead and select this option. And then here you can specify if you want to track all videos on your web pages or some videos. We're going to leave it at all videos, but if you do select some videos, then you can pick some variables and define which particular YouTube videos you want to track. For example, if you have a particular video title, then you can set that up. For our example, we're just going to continue with all videos. Once done, go ahead and save it. Now we need to set a tag when this trigger happens, when the YouTube video is interacted with. In our case, we are going to send this information over to Google Analytics as events. So click on tag and create new tag. Let's go ahead and pick our trigger that we set already. And now let's call this tag YouTube video tag. And click in the middle to create this tag. Pick Google Analytics. Track type is going to be event. And then we have to set these parameters. For the category, you can give whatever name makes sense for you. I am going to pick the video provider's name as the category. So click on plus and video provider. This is coming from the inbuilt variable that we selected earlier in this lecture. Then for action, I'm going to pick the video title. So click on plus and pick video title. Then you have label in the label. I'm going to pick few more variables. Okay. Video status. Click on plus again. Video percent. And then another variable. Video current time. So I've got three things that will show up in label. Value. I'm going to leave it empty. It's a non-interaction hit. Google Analytics ID is GA ID. Leave everything as it is and go ahead and save it. Now we are ready. Go ahead and put your Google Tag Manager in preview mode. Go to your page and it starts in a preview mode. Let's go to the video. 
and start the video. You'll see that YouTube video tag got fired when we started playing it. Now let's go to Google Analytics and see what happens. So I played the video and I paused it. It's total 38 seconds long and I paused it at seven second mark. So go to Google Analytics. Here we have events in last 30 minutes. You can see event category is YouTube. That's the provider name. And then event action is the name of that video. Click on the event category. Here you can see the actions on that video. At start, it was a 0% and zero duration. The progress was marked at 10% mark. Remember we said progress to be captured at 10% mark, 25%, 50%, etc. Four seconds into video was 10% mark. So you can see the progress, that's the status. And then pause status happened at 18% mark when it was seven seconds into the video. So this is how you track YouTube videos embedded on your page. Once you're done, make sure to leave the preview mode and submit your tag to production. And then you're done. Hello everybody. I hope this course gave you a good overview of how to get started with Google Tag Manager and how to deploy tags. I have shown you some examples and I'm going to continue to update examples as your feedback comes to me. It's practically impossible to put every scenario in a course. So I'm relying on you guys, thousands of you, to come back to me with your questions so that I can show you exactly how that's done in Google Tag Manager. So this course will keep evolving as your questions come, but you have enough information on how to deploy, how to use a tag manager. Together, we will evolve this course. So together, we will evolve this course and hopefully cover all the scenarios possible. Please send me your feedback and your questions and good luck.